so Tony, a question that relates to something you just said about, you know, having this person that, you know, identifies as, you know, a member of a particular group. One of the questions that came in is, you know, given the sensitivity of this data, you know, how are companies encouraging employees to uh, self-identify on disability or sexual orientation or ethnicity or race or any of these things so that you actually have the data to, you know, work with within these companies? Yeah. See, that is one of the questions in terms that, that, that create the biggest challenge is that if you have a culture inside of your organization where people um, are clear about what why you're asking these questions or it's a learning culture or it's these things in which people are used to the organization operating and thinking and assessing themselves on their progress around diversity and inclusion, you have a tendency to see greater levels of participation. But if I'm a new organization, I'm organization Tony, and I look at organization Brad, and you've been doing this for 20 years, and one of the things that you do is you've got a great self-ID um, uh, report out process, and I say, I want to do that. If I'm starting there without having leaders informed and leaders talking about it and trying to encourage people to do it and talk about the importance of it, not having it talked about it from the top of the lead, uh, leadership house, as well as having it discussed from frontline managers. And, and when I was inside of organizations, what we did, would do was train the people managers to share with their team why this is important to mention this, talk about what we're trying to do, discuss this. So it really is building a culture of trust that is required in order to capture that data. And it's going to be more than just saying, here's what everybody else is doing and we should do this too.